We are officially in a bear market. Crypto is crashing. NFTs are burning. Russia invades Ukraine. We're sending our love and prayers to the people in Ukraine. And we're going to talk about how the market is responding to the most important world news happening right now. Welcome to Goats in the Metaverse. I'm Yossi Hassan. Stanley Mayton. And we're here to cover all the daily happenings in the world of NFTs. It is a somber day across the board. Uh, I almost don't even want to talk about the goat vaults uh, under these kind of conditions, but it'd be uh, irresponsible of us not to tell you about it. Uh, the goat vault is our way of rewarding our community. We have locked up some NFTs. And uh, as you can see by this graph, it's kind of a reflection of the movement of the NFT world. Uh, we're seeing that our gold vault is now valued at $58,773. Just a week ago, it was close to $100,000. For those of you who don't know what the gold vault is, it is our way of rewarding our community. We have uh, secured a number of NFTs that we have locked away into a vault and that we'll be opening up when we get to 5,000 subscribers. And some of our lucky subscribers will be winning the contents of that vault. We will be tracking every single week where that goat vault is up and today $58,776 is up for grabs. So if you smash the subscribe button or the like button, you stand a chance to win. Stanley, what is happening in the market? What is happening in the world of NFTs? What is happening with the world? Uh, I don't know, but it's definitely following a similar pattern. Um, but days, mama told us there's going to be days like this. So we need to kind of, Keep positive and uh, and 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 we're gonna make it right. There's a big saying in in the uh, in the NFT community, WGMI. We are going to make it. This is just a road stop. Um, yeah, NFTs are crashing. Uh, Ethereum's actually up a little bit from yesterday's show, uh, which is a good sign. But I believe ETH is right now about two thousand six hundred eighty-five dollars. Last night when I checked at the brink of war, it was about, I believe, $2,300. Um, but if you really want to take a look of, of what's happening in the NFT market, they are in the pooper, as they like to call it. Is that a professional term? That is a professional term, and I am I got a it. professional. Floor <laughs> prices. Here we go. Board Ape, 77 and a half. Cool Cats, less than eight. B Friends, 12 and a half. Punk 60, almost 62, Doodles 10, Azuki 10, uh, Mutant 16, Clone X 11 and a half, World Woman 7 and a half, Invisible Friends at 9. Uh, we'll talk about them in a bit. Gutter Cat Gang is 5 and a half, and Cybercons are almost at 8. Now, if we look back at similar floor prices a week ago, we're going to see a much different story. 93 for Board Ape Yacht Club. Uh, that is a big difference, my friend. 20 ETH. 20 ETH. That is $52,000. That's not a small amount on a change sure. for, a, for a single uh, single NFT. And a week before that, I think Bore Yacht Club was four, was touching about 115 ETH. So if you take two weeks, uh, you know, we've lost uh, 40% on the price. That's a very quick movement in a blue chip project. Uh, and we see some of the patterns. You know, we saw the same thing happening with CryptoPunks. There was big hype, big movements. I think the floor price got almost to 150 ETH or even reached 150 ETH, now sitting at 62 ETH. Uh, and it's almost like a playbook. There's these projects that get pumped and pumped and pumped and pumped. Uh, on the way up, you never want to sell. And then they turn so quickly and you're like, why did I not sell? I knew it was too good to be true. And uh, here we are today. Had you sold the top of Board Ape, you could have bought two today. Uh, I mean, the human emotion part of this is absolutely astonishing, right? Like, when everything's pumping, you're like, this is going to, it's going to go to a billion never gonna hit. When everything is crashing, you're like, what am I doing? Um, yes. But listen, just a quick heads up. This is none of this is financial advice. Do your own research. Um, if you do look at, you know, everything's down. It's it's very, very clear. But we have been here before. Uh, and, you know, there were some somber times just a few months ago. And we were looking at NFTs and we were saying, oh, my God, it, it, is this the end? And then all of a sudden, it, things started to churn. 
So, um, you know, you, I, I don't know if we talked about it in the show or we talked about this before the show. I believe, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. You said this is not this is not the end of the day. There's still more left to go. Is that is that an accurate statement? It was an accurate statement, and uh, that more to go could be another seventy percent. It could be quite brutal and quite lethal. Uh, you know what we want to probably see is what happens in these markets. Is first we'll see some kind of uptick in Bitcoin. Uh, the markets move together. So do we see any rallying in Bitcoin? Then we see rallying in Ethereum. And generally, when we see a rallying in the Ethereum price, the correlation with that is the NFT prices go down when ETH starts to rally. Uh, so that would aggravate and probably accelerate these uh, NFT prices going down when we see ETH rallying. And then, only then, do we start seeing some kind of correction in the NFT markets. That's if it plays the same formula moving forward. But that's what I would be looking for. The signals for me is... Do we see Bitcoin correcting? Then do we see Ethereum correcting? And when that's happening, NFTs are going to take a further dip. And that's the time, I think, to be buying. And now there's two ways you could trade that. One, you could be buying ETH today, hoping to see that it's going to correct and go up on that bull market. And then you're buying NFTs at the cheaper price that you secured ETH today. It's speculative. It may go the other way. Uh, or you could be going and saying, I'm going to wait to see those NFT prices dip even further before I get in and use it as an opportunity to buy. That's how I think about it today. How do you think about it, Sam? Uh, I mean, I, if you look at the chart of what's down in the last seven days, I'm looking at what blue chips are there and whether there's, some of them are undervalued. Um, one of the ones that's not on this list that I've been looking at once again not financial advice, is the board aid kennel. Um, they're down to almost their 30-day low, um, and they doubled in the peak, right? So that could be an, a, a play that I'm looking at personally to say, hey, you know, we know the coin is coming out. We're not sure exactly when, but when that coin comes out, the dogs are going to be in play, allegedly, supposedly. And this could be a good buying opportunity if you're buying this thing at you know, 100% discount. So that's something that I'm looking at. But if you look at some of these numbers, right, Azuki's down 55%, Board 8, 32%, Axie Infinity, 38%, Mutants, Clonex, Punk, 77%. I mean, th these are sales volumes, um, but there, there's opportunities out there. There's definitely opportunities. And, and, you know, who's the community that you feel strongly about? Yesterday we did our show about community. If you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out right there. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that's what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the blue chips and which one do I think that there could be a buy off? Um, and yeah, just like you, I think there's still some space for it to continue to go down. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, what's adding to that sentiment, we saw yesterday the big auction happening at Sotheby's. Sotheby's had a planned sale of 104 crypto punks. Uh, and uh, it was a little bit of a, uh oh, uh, a bit of a rug pull that happened on Sotheby's minutes before the auction was supposed to happen. Uh, the buyer allegedly pulled the auction, pulled the lot, and uh, the sale didn't go ahead. I had some of my colleagues at Metaversal there sitting in the front row waiting for the auction and uh, said it was pretty disappointing and pretty embarrassing that uh, it got pulled uh, minutes before. Um, we've got the tweet from the seller saying, never mind, decided to huddle uh, moments after his original tweet, which was today, I'm excited to announce my partnership with Sotheby's to create high, highest profile NFT sale of all time. Uh, and in their defense, it couldn't have expected the, bull mar the bear market that was to come. If we look at the price of Bitcoin from the time he made that announcement that he's selling uh, on the Sotheby's lot to today, it's down almost 30%. And uh, obviously, we heard the news of Russia attacking Ukraine last night as well. So you now have two events that the seller was probably thinking, well, this is probably not the best time to optimize my sale. Had he sold a month ago, probably could have fetched double the number that could have fetched today. Uh, so probably thinking I can wait till the next bull market before I bring this lot back on. But either way, embarrassing for Sotheby's, who put a lot of marketing and effort into the sale uh, and doesn't do much for sentiment in the broader NFT market. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a big F you to uh, everybody involved 
and I think the anti NFTers, anti cryptos are are kind of sitting here and saying, "We told you so, right? This this is this is we th these new these guys can't play in our classic art space. This would never happen if this was a Picasso, right?" Um, and you know, I think there's some truth to that, right? Like if this was a Picasso or some world renowned painting, I don't, I don't think, you know, war or the crypto market would stop that. Uh, so I, I do think it is, it is a little bit of a black eye on the industry, but at the same time, I think it is something that is going to get overlooked and we're going to continue to trek on forward. So, but yeah, but I suppose there was a big party that was supposed to happen. And, uh, I wonder if that got canceled or they still they still. I'll tell you, there was no there was no big party. Some people had some drinks and snacks, but uh, mood was pretty subdued, and no party was to be had. There was a party, however, in the Invisible Friends world with the uh, auction of their golden Invisible Friend. It's a one of one, which sold for four hundred and ninety six point six nine ETH. So, despite the down market or the bear market in NFT land. That is a big number, over a million dollar sale uh, for that NFT that went into their charity. Um, that's a big number. It is a big number. And listen, we talked about Invisible Friends last week. If you haven't seen that episode, make sure you check that out. Uh, <laughs> Invisible Friends went on a run, right? I think opened, went to 11 Ethereum. Even uh, higher. I saw it at 14. Oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, I did have a poll on my Instagram asking our audience to see my, is this going to, once it reveals, does it go to uh, over 4 ETH or under 4 ETH? If you're watching the show, comment in the comments and give us your opinion. I'm going to make a prediction that once the reveal happens, it is going to go below 4 ETH. This is following the, and I hate to say this, the Mechaverse, the hate beast. Time. Yeah. yeah, that 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 whole uh, model, and uh, I'm I'm not a fan. There was a tweet that I saw today that said this is bad for the NFT space. Nothing against Invisible Friends, but people are chasing what they think could be the next board API club. And if you look at those blue chip projects, they came out of nowhere, right? They had organic growth. They had communities. We talked about communities. Um, they weren't just like all of a sudden, boom, we're going on fire and now we're going to 100 ETH. So my prediction below four, you see yours? I think you're right. And if we look back at the entire market, there's only really been three projects or maybe four projects that have managed to hold an over 10 ETH floor price. We've got Board Ape Yacht Club, uh, CryptoPunks, Azuki, and uh, and Cool Cats, I think, are the only ones that have managed to consistently hold above a 10 ETH floor price. Uh, and yeah. what, what? Bonex Doodles, right? Oh, you're right. Sorry. Bonex, has Doodles managed to hold over 10? Yeah, they have been. They have been pretty, holding pretty steady. But, you know, keep in mind, Clonex and Azuki took some time to get there. They didn't get there right away. So Yeah, so if you think about that, we've got hundreds of projects. And if you're already seeing that on Mint, prices are 11, 12, 14, ETH, uh, is that sustainable? Are you going to be able to sustain those kind of price volumes when people bought in at a couple of uh, 0.2 or 0.1 or 0.5 ETH? And the answer to that is no. It's got to build organically. It's got to build over time. Uh, for me, that is a big red flag and signal that this is overhyped. If you're in the whitelist and you can flip it, good luck to you. You made some money, but I'm not the one on the other side of that trade. I agree. But, you know, Talking about bear market, everything crashing. There was a big sale in the board ape community, uh, 162 ETH, the king crown. And for all you collectors out there, for all of you, you know, all the people that are watching that say one day I'm going to want to buy the rares, those king crowns, man, they always hold up their value. Even in a bear, bear market, you're still getting almost 400 grand for it. Well, that's our show for today. That is all we have to share to our friends in the Ukraine. I hope you are safe. Uh, and remember, for anyone else out there, that there are more serious things than NFTs going on in this world. 
Uh, but if you are in the game, I hope your trading is going well. And uh, we will see you again, same time, same place on Goats in the Meadows. Peace and love, everybody.